This video was brought to you by Technically Not a Technician. In today's video we'll start the process of taking a first generation Rampage Arcade 1UP cabinet like this one. And we'll modify it so that it can run the very rare Quake Arcade Tournament Edition. The story of Quake Arcade seems to be a very short one, as only 20 units were reported to have been made, and an unknown number of conversion kits for the cabinet being deployed. This was an effort by Lasertron and ID Software to make some easy cash off of a popular home PC game, but the price tag of these units was too high for most arcades of that time. This high price is why so few Quake Arcade units were ordered. Regardless we have very few units in the wild, making this a very rare arcade cabinet. You can find the main chud file, and it's possible to extract the needed software off of the chud file to play on a modern computer. If you'd like to see a video showing you how to extract that software please find the link above or in the description. For our Quake mod we're going to need a few items. Please make sure you check in the description for all of the parts I'm using, and when you're in the description please make sure you hit that like button, and then make sure you're subscribed to the channel. The major electronical components that we'll need for the arcade controls is a zero delay encoder for all of the arcade buttons, and a trackball. My trackball is a little old school in the fact that it's using the older PS2 connection. Because of this I'm also using a PS2 adapter, and that's all my hardware. After I was able to get the software running, and working reasonably well on my computer, I looked over the extra arcade parts one has, and decided I'd see if I could build myself a prototype Quake arcade control and give the game a go. My first attempt at an arcade controller unit for Quake was built using cardboard as the control deck, however, after successfully making it work, and having a great time playing Quake. I decided to mod an arcade one up for Quake Arcade and maybe other first-person shooters, and of course other trackball games like Golden Tee, Simpsons Bowling, and classics like Centipede. The control panel is fairly well documented, with pictures online of the original unit, and even some animated pictures that we're able to get from the video instructions that come with the cabinet. I'll be modifying the original design a little, as I'd like to expand my gaming options, and add a few features. First I'll add an extra button for changing weapons, so I can scroll weapons up and down. I'll also add a crouch button as this will be needed for Quake 2, and I'll add an attack 2 button, or secondary attack button. I believe I need the secondary attack button for games like Unreal Tournament. I can't guarantee that I can get every game I want working, as much will depend on the configuration options on each game, and how well each game will integrate with my front-end loader. As of right now the best case scenario would be multiple trackball arcade games, some great first and third person shooters PC games, and a track mode as the front end loader. I'd also like to be able to completely control the arcade cabinet without an external keyboard or mouse. Constructing my current prototype arcade controller does require some basic build skills. Please work smart, and don't work past your personal abilities. If you find an aspect of this build is a little past your ability, then do the right thing, and find some help. After I've gotten my overall layout I used hole saws to cut out the necessary button and trackball holes in the areas that I needed them. I also used a router to carve out the necessary mounting space for the trackball. I'm not going to go too much into the physical build of the control panel. If you'd like to see a DIY video on how to build your own then please let me know in the comments section. In short, my arcade controls for this build consist of a 2-inch trackball, 6 30mm buttons, and 4 24mm buttons. After all of my button and trackball holes are in place I'll mount each button, then mount my USB controller in an area that is in reach of each of the buttons. Let's talk a little about the donor cabinet we'll be using. Rampage is a classic that I loved growing up and when I saw that Arcade 1UP had him I thought it would be fun to relive some of that gameplay with the kids. The kids and I played it hard as you can see by the damaged screen. Other than that thin line running the bottom of the screen the cabinet doesn't have any damage. I even got a Rampage light up marquee. I originally purchased this cab to mod into a multiplayer, but we now have better options like the Simpsons cabinet or NBA Jam. With that said we'll be using this cabinet for our Quake Arcade Tournament Edition mod. 
I figured I'd give Rampage one last play before converting to Quake Arcade Tournament Edition. But the next time you see me playing this cabinet it will be the Quake Arcade software running. We'll now prepare our cabinet for modification by removing all of the unneeded front control panel hardware. This is done by removing the four screws that are on the control panel. You'll also find that you have a ribbon cable from the control deck that extends to the PCB board. That will also need to be disconnected and removed. Now that everything up front is disconnected we'll try and dry fit our new control deck and see if it needs to be adjusted. You'll notice that the coin and player buttons aren't mounted yet. That's because I'll not be mounting them on the control deck. Instead of mounting them on the deck, I'll mount them up front and I'll place the speakers and the external USB port on that same up front panel. We'll do that later in the video. It looks as if dry fitting this together has shown us that we must adjust the USB zero delay encoder a little a farther back. I'll move the zero delay encoder so that it's closer to the center of the panel and away from the front, that small adjustment should make everything fit. With the zero delay adjusted and all the parts on the control panel fitted, well close this up and move to the video adapter. I'm going to add this video adapter, then we'll turn on this computer, boot the arcade, and test out this dry run to see if it plays well, and see if we want to continue this build. When adding your video you're going to need to connect three wires. The first I believe is the monitor power, identified right here. The second video cabling that needs to be connected is the data. When connecting the power and the data please be mindful of the color coding and of the direction your cabling is facing. The final connection from the monitor to our video adapter is simply a ground. You're going to need to supply a small nut and bolt to make our ground connection. You'll not only have three cables that need to be connected coming from the monitor, but you'll also have a power connection that needs to be made. On most of my builds, I use the stock arcade one-up power supply. Make sure you check and verify you use the right voltage power supply. The video signal that I'll be outputting from is an HDMI cable. Because of this, our next cable to be plugged in will be the HDMI. You may have something different depending on the kind of equipment you're using. The last connection that I'll be making is the audio. Like I said I'll be using an HDMI cable, and those cables not only carry the video, but they also carry the audio signal. Because of this the video adapter that we're using will have to send the audio signal to our amp. Because this is a dry run I'll not be fully installing the audio yet. At this point in the build, I'm very confident everything will work, but I'd be lying if I told you I'm not making all of this up as I go. We now have the arcade booted, and Windows is up and running. Once this cabinet is completed it will boot into a launcher that will let me boot games from nothing more than the arcade controls, however right now we'll have to manually load our games via the keyboard. The game seems to run very well on this little cabinet, the controls are responsive, and it really feels natural to play on this trackball setup. At this point in the video I know I'm all in. Quake arcade cabinets are rare, and the only way I'll ever own, or play one is to build my own. I've got to admit, I feel lucky to have all the needed resources available, as a child I would have never have thought building a rare arcade cabinet out of spare parts to be possible. Now that I know my idea will work, and we have a successful dry run, I feel confident enough to modify the front panel with speakers, the external USB ports, and our last two buttons. 
I'm also not going to go into great detail about modifying the front panel, other than to say that we cut holes for both the speakers, and we made three holes all with a one inch hole saw, for the two buttons, and the external USB port. I placed the speakers off to each side, and the USB ports right in the middle of the panel, with my buttons above and below the USB port. Once I've got the front panel built, it simply slides right back into its old spot. The coin and player buttons will need to be plugged into the USB encoder, and we'll need to also plug the speakers into the amplifier. Now that the front panel is connected let's finish putting the control panel back on, do some cable management, and place our computer in the arcade cabinet. Cable management isn't my favorite part of mods, but it does make the inside look good, and makes it easier to service the unit if needed. So I'll do my best to make it look nice. I'm going to start with mounting the video adapter and the video adapter's controller. Both I'll be mounting to the bottom left of the monitor mount, and I'll be using some basic plastic standoffs to hold both in place. I'll also be finishing the audio. For this build, I'm using a kit that was suggested by Amazon based off of my search history. I've got to admit, Amazon seems to know what they're doing. This kit had everything I needed, and looks and fits well. The audio kit even had all of the needed cabling. I could not have asked for a more complete solution. As far as setting up the software and the power management, I'll be making separate videos for those. This video is getting long, and I think it will be best to break everything into sections. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel for updates on this project. I'm also not going to get into physically installing the computer, as at this point it's simply placing a computer inside an arcade and inserting cabling into the back ports. I feel like I've been successful in starting this arcade project, and I like the idea of being able to play something not many people have had an opportunity to check out. I also love that I get to play it in a way that is similar to the original cabinet. I look forward to finishing this cabinet out, again please check back to the channel for updates on this one. Now that we have a halfway working cabinet please enjoy a demo in the form of a little game play, and please take a minute to check out our sponsors, you can find the link to them in my description.
I want to thank you for watching this arcade mod video. I hope that you enjoyed it and found it informative. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. It really helps the channel grow.